Hey everyone, welcome to this, our video solution to problem 5 from Super Quiz 3. And in this problem, we are given four different functions, which are somehow related to 1 over 1 minus x, right? And we'll get into that. And we want to find the power series expansions, as well as their radius and interval of convergences. All right, well, before we do any of these, let's just briefly recall the one power series right from the beginning we know, which is that 1 over 1 minus x is equal to the sum starting at 0 of x to the n, provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1. Okay, so here the interval of convergence is equal to negative 1 to 1, not including the endpoints, and the radius of convergence is equal to 1. All right, so we're going to use this in a few different ways in order to find the power series for all of these. And knowing the interval and radius of convergence for this particular one is going to give it to the other ones as well. So for A, 1 over 1 plus x, we do the standard trick of replacing plus x with minus the opposite of x. And so using this geometric series formula, we know that this will be the sum starting at 0 of negative x to the nth power. Now, we would like to rewrite this in power series form, so we want to get the x's isolated. So we can do so by writing negative x as negative 1 times x. And then we can distribute this exponent. So we'll end up with the alternator, negative 1 to the n, times x to the n. Okay, now we know from the geometric series test that this is only going to converge, right, at this step, if negative x has absolute value less than 1. Okay, so we need here that uh, negative x has absolute value less than 1, but this is no different than saying positive x has absolute value less than 1. So the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence are not going to change. They'll still be from the interval from negative 1 to 1 and the radius equal to 1. Okay, let's try B. Now B is a little more complicated. Uh, let's first thing, take this x and move it to the side, right? So we can focus on this 1 over 1 minus 6x. That again we can use the geometric series for. We just replace x by 6x. And so this is going to equal x times the series starting at 0 of 6x to the nth power. And of course, we need here that the absolute value of 6x is less than 1. Now, we can immediately rewrite that as saying the absolute value of x is less than 1 6, right? So we just divided by a 6. That's going to help us when we get our interval and radius of convergence. All right, but let's rewrite this as a power series. So I want to get the x's by themselves. So I know I can break this up here as 6 to the n times x to the n. And then there's another x that I can distribute. And so I'll get this series starting at 0. When I in, distribute the x in, I'll get an x to the n plus 1. And then I still have this 6 to the nth power. All right. And what about the IOC and ROC? Well, the interval of convergence, right, we need the absolute value of x to be less than 1 6. So this interval of convergence will go between negative a 6 and positive a 6. And we don't include the endpoint because this is a strict inequality. And so the radius of convergence, right, halfway between here is uh, 0, and that's 0 to 1 6. So the radius is 1 6. All right. Now this next one is a little trickier to see. Right, if you haven't had a little experience with this. But the natural log of 1 plus 2x. Well, let's pretend there wasn't a 2 for a moment. Just the natural log of 1 plus x. If you took the derivative of the natural log of 1 plus x, you would get 1 over 1 plus x, which was exactly part a. Yeah, including this 2 is going to mess things up just a teeny little bit. But not too bad. All right. So we know that this here is the derivative, or rather the uh, antiderivative, of what? 
Well, if I did 1 over 1 plus 2x, an antiderivative of this is going to be the natural log of 1 plus 2x, but then, uh, we're going to be off by a constant, right, because of this 2. Because if you took the derivative of ln of 1 plus 2x, you would also have to multiply by a 2. So I think we're going to want to multiply by a 2 here. Okay, so maybe we'll just do a quick check on the other side, right? So if we have 2 antiderivative 1 over 1 plus 2x dx, okay, an antiderivative is going to be the natural log of 1 plus 2x divided by 2, right? Because we can check. If I to differentiate this here, I'll get 1 over 1 plus 2x times 2. So I need to divide by 2 to compensate. And now these 2s cancel, and I get the natural log of 1 plus 2x. Beautiful. That's what I wanted. All right. Um, now, of course, uh, it could be the case, right, when we take an antiderivative that we don't quite get the natural log of 1 plus 2x. We might get it up to some constant. So, uh, of course, hitting this with a 2 doesn't change that, but this could be plus c for some real number c. Okay, but we also now know we can turn 1 over 1 plus 2x into a series. And then I'll be able to integrate that series term by term. So here I'm going to have a series. We'll start it at 0. And it will be, well, let's see, instead of uh, 1 plus x, we have 1 plus 2x. We make this minus negative 2x. So this is negative 2 to the n, x to the n. All right, and then, of course, we still have this constant c. All right, let's see. I want to swap the order, right, of the summation and the integral, which I'm allowed to do. And... When I do that, this negative 2 to the n, oh, of course, we're missing a, a dx in here. Uh, this negative 2 to the n has nothing to do with x, so I can pull that out as well. So let's see here. We have 2 times summation, n starting at 0. And let's get this stuff out of the way. Do, 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 do. Um, all right. Then we have a negative 2 to the n, and we're going to integrate x to the n dx and then there's this constant. All right, let's see. This integral is just going to be x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And so I can now rewrite uh, this as, well, let's see. We can move a 2 inside here. And if I do, it might be good to break up this negative 2 to the n as negative 1 times 2. So I will have negative 1 to the n times 2 to the n plus 1, times x to the n plus 1, and then all this gets divided here by n plus 1. And then we still have plus a constant. Now, I would like to know what this constant is. And a good way to figure that out is by just plugging in x equals 0. So when x is equal to 0, the natural log of 1 plus 2x will just be the natural log of 1, which is 0. So in the x equals 0 case, we have 0 equals. And then what's happening on the right-hand side? Well, the lowest power of x we get is when x, n is 0 and we get x to the 1. Well, all the other powers of x are going to be 0 and x equals 0. Even x to the 1 is going to be 0 at x equals 0. So all of this is 0 when x is equal to 0. And so we end up with 0 plus a constant c. So therefore, our constant is equal to 0. Okay, so we're able to conclude that the natural log of 1 plus 2x is the sum starting at 0 of negative 1 to the n times 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1. Okay, now what about the radius and interval of convergence? Well, because we integrated, it's possible that we were able to pick up new endpoints. But our result says we're not going to change right, the radius of convergence okay, from what it would have been if it was just 1 over 1 plus 2x. Now, for the 1 over 1 plus 2x, we know that we need right, the absolute value of uh, negative 2x to be less than 1. 
which is equivalent to saying that the absolute value of x has to be less than one half. So our radius of convergence, that's the easy part, that's going to be one half. The interval of convergence then, since we're centered at zero, is going to have to look like negative one half to positive one half, but now we may include the endpoints. So we're going to have to check those endpoints. So when x is equal to negative one half, we have that the series, we can now replace the x by negative one half. So we're going to end up with the sum starting at zero of negative one to the n times two to the n plus one times negative one half to the n plus one over n plus one. And first error, I have uh, this negative one to the n plus one, and I can multiply that by negative one to the n. And let's see what we're going to get. So we'll have negative one to the two n plus one. Okay, that's actually just going to equal negative one because two n plus one is always odd. So this is going to equal negative one. Then I have two to the n plus one times a half times uh, a half to the n plus one. That's the same thing as two to the n plus one over two to the n plus one. That's just equal to one. And then I have over n plus one. So there's a negative coming from here, which I can pull out. And I just have one over n plus one. And this is the harmonic series with a negative. Okay, so this is the negative of the harmonic series. And so it diverges. So we definitely don't get negative one half in this interval of convergence. And actually, there's a good reason why we shouldn't get it which is if we go back up and look at our function, when x is negative a half, this is two times negative a half, that's negative one, plus one is zero. And the natural log isn't even defined at zero. So, okay, it's not too bad if we find out that the series, right, that is supposed to be uh, representing this natural log also isn't defined at zero. All right, now what happens at one half? Well, it should be very similar, except it looks like we're gonna get an alternator. And that might make all the difference. So I have the sum starting at 0, negative 1 to the n times 2 to the n plus 1. But now it's just times a half to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And again, the 2 to the n plus 1 and the half to the n plus 1 will cancel. And so I'm just left with negative 1 to the n over n plus 1. And this is the alternating harmonic series. And we know that the alternating harmonic series converges. All right, if we want to prove it, we can do it, for example, using the alternating series test. All right, so proof uses the alternating series test. Okay, but this was a, this is a nice known result from class. Okay, if you get rid of the alternator, you have one over n plus one. And we know that one over n plus one is positive and one over n plus one converges to zero. So we can use the alternating series test. Okay, so our interval of convergence is actually going to pick up an endpoint, right? It's the first time in this problem that's happened. Okay, so there's our ROC and our IOC for problem C. So what about D? So D, let's, uh, let's go down and make ourselves a little bit of room. All right, so we have one over one minus x times one minus three x. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to do this. I, I prefer the first way because it, it seems to work more easily more of the time, but the second way is also going to be okay in this situation. So method one is I'm going to use partial fractions. I'm gonna break this uh, rational function up into two rational functions, each of which is essentially going to look like our original geometric series, maybe a slight twist with a three or something. 
So 1 over 1 minus x times 1 minus 3x, I can write this as something over 1 minus x plus something over 1 minus 3x. And to get this first something, I'm going to go back over here, cover up 1 minus x, and let x equal 1. So I get 1 over 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So this is uh, negative 1 half. And then to get this one, I need to let x equal, let's see, 1 third. Uh, but I cover up the 1 minus 3x. So 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds. 1 over 2 thirds is 3 halves. Okay, but now I can pull out this negative 1 half, and I'll be left with 1 over 1 minus 3x, which is just our usual geometric series. So this is just x to the n. And of course, for this, we need the absolute value of x to be less than 1. All right, then we go to the second summand. We can pull out this 3 halves. And again, I, I didn't have something which is really close to my original geometric series. Just now there's a 3x instead of an x. So I have a sum, and it'll be a 3 to the n, x to the n. Now for this piece, I need that the absolute value of x, uh, of 3x rather, is less than 1. Or equivalently, the absolute value of x is less than 1 third. So if I want both of these series to converge at the same time, what has to happen? Well, this first one is going to converge between negative 1 and 1, right, with 0 in the middle. The second one is only going to converge, though, between negative a third and positive a third. So it's only going to converge here. And I need both of them to converge at the same time. So I'm only going to get this, this middle piece. So the radius of convergence is going to be 1 third. The interval of convergence is going to be negative a third to a third. Now are we done? Well, you know, it'd be actually pretty nice to put these together. Okay, And it's not going to be hard to do so. You'll notice the powers of x, those line up, and the indices they line up as well. So we actually can put these together into one series, starting at 0. And what do we get? Uh, so this negative 1 half could come in. And so I'll have negative 1 half. And we're going to have an x to the n out here. And this 3 halves could come in. Now when I put that in, I'm going to get 3 times 3 to the n, which is 3 to the n plus 1, but then over 2. Okay, um, and I could put this together, I guess, because these have a common denominator. And so I end up with 3 to the n plus 1 minus 1 over 2 times x to the n. All right, let's check out the second method now. So the second method is multiplying geometric series. And in some ways, this is the more intuitive one to try, but it's usually a little bit nastier to pull off. This problem won't be so bad, but it can get a little nasty. So what I'm going to do is take the original function and just write it as a product of two fractions. So 1 over 1 minus x times 1 over 1 minus 3x. And we know that we can write the first fraction, again, as a geometric series. And I'm going to play a little game with the indices. I'm going to actually use an m and an n, which uh, is typical practice when you're trying to multiply series rather than add them. So this first one, uh, whoops, I'll have uh, x to the m, so with m starting at 0. And I know that x has to have absolute value less than 1. All right, then my second one, I'm going to now, this one I'll start n at 0. Instead of 1 minus x, I had 1 minus 3x. So again, this will be 3 to the n times x to the n. Okay, And here, just as we saw up above, we're going to need the absolute value of x to be less than 1 third. Right? That's what that, that cost of that 3 there. So for us to do both of these at the same time, again, we're going to need to be between negative a third and a third. Right? For both of these to happen, right? we need that. So that, that wouldn't change that argument. Uh, now the issue is, how do we put these together? And 
Um, multiplying these summations is always a little bit trickier than it feels. You can't just multiply corresponding entries, right? Uh, in fact, let's before we write it down, let's let's just do a, an example of here what's going on. So I have one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. Times now this would be uh, one plus three x plus nine x squared plus twenty seven x cubed, etc. Right. Notice I'm getting powers of 3. That's where the 1, 3, 9, 27 are coming from. And if I wanted to multiply this out, I'd start by saying, how can I get a constant? Okay, I do 1 times 1. All right, no big problem there. But if I want to get an x, there's actually two ways I can do it. I can do this 1 times this 3x. I could also do this x times this 1. So I'm actually going to get one plus three different ways of getting x. All right, so this would actually be a four. Uh, let's look at the x squared. To get an x squared, I could do one times nine x squared. So I'm going to get a nine. I could do x times three x. So that's going to give me a three. And I could also do a one times x squared and a one. So this is going to be a plus a 1. So there's actually 13 ways of getting x squared. All right, And I would keep going like this. But the important point here is you are not just multiplying, in this case, say, 1 times 3 to the n. All right? Because that's not what we end up getting. Right? We, we actually have to add up a bunch of different products of 1 times various 3s to the n's. So what really happens is we're going to do a sum, and we're going to use a different index now. We'll use a k. And you can see each of these is a sum, right? So I'm going to put a sum in here, and then I'll have my x to the k. So the question is, is what is the coefficient of x to the k? And, well, from working it out here, you can see what's happening. I'm actually getting the sum of the first several uh, powers of 3. Right. So what's happening is I say, OK, I'm going to uh, look at powers of three and maybe we'll use an L here and L can start at zero and it can stop at K. So if, for example, K is equal to two, I would do three to the zero plus three to the one plus three to the two. And that would be this term right here. OK, um, so there is a nice formula you can always use uh, for figuring out this coefficient and it will come by multiplying corresponding terms together and you need to look for ones right which are going to um, add up to the same value whatever this k is okay so that's how we can do this um, now this actually doesn't look like the same answer as we had from method one yeah. method one we ended up with three to the n plus one minus one over two so did we make a mistake somewhere? Well, not really. Um, if we sum this finite geometric series, so the sum L goes from 0 to K, 3 to the L, this actually equals 3 to the, in this case, K plus 1 minus 1 over 2. All right? And that's that just coming from, well, there's a nice formula for a finite geometric series. So actually, we, we ended up with the same answer, just in a different form. And which way you, you write it, well, depend on what you prefer, right? You might like this nice closed formula, or you might like this the simplicity of right just a 3 to the L, and of course, you're adding them together, right? This is easier to remember. Oh, add up the powers of 3, etc. Okay, so... Um, again, I, I think you'll see here in, in general, it can be a little bit of a bear to multiply these series together. Uh, not that we can't do it, right? We, we can, and we do in, in a lot of cases. Uh, but partial fractions in this situation is, is quite elegant, and I, and I like that method.